they have one of the longest age range for applicants i mean if you're 18 to 59 years old i'm repeating it again if you're 18 years to 59 years old you can apply for provincial nomination in hello beautiful people welcome back to the canada info channel my name is wolo i am a regulated canadian immigration consultant and I, be, I am based in New Brunswick. I am still a Manitoban. <laughs> I like to mention this in my videos so that people who don't know should know that I have moved from Manitoba to New Brunswick. Okay, so how was your week? I hope your week was well. Mine was a bit stressful, but I mean, um, we don't have any choice. We have to keep pushing. Uh, the Bible says, occupy till I come. So I am still occupying. We have to occupy till Christ comes. Okay, so if you're new to this channel, my name is Wolo. And I talk about immigrating to Canada, life in Canada, and anything that has to do with immigration. And hopefully, I'll start talking about immigrating to other countries very soon. Okay, so one thing you should do for me is subscribe to this channel and give me the thumbs up or like button or whatever. To my old subscribers, I want to say thank you very much for sustaining this channel because, I mean, when I talk to people who are following this channel during consultations, I'm always excited to hear that you've been a long-time follower. And, yeah, I want to say thank you to you. Eshe, Nagode, Mexi Boku, Danke. What other language will I speak now? I don't know. <laughs> Dalo, whatever. <laughs> okay. So today's video um, is in continuation of my last video when I talked about 2.8 billion temporary residents versus 485,000 permanent resident slots. And I gave some strategies on people who are already part of the 2.8 million in Canada, what they can do. I am more particular about people who are 40 years and above. Yes, because I feel that this group of people is very difficult for them to actually gain PR status from outside Canada. And then most of them come into Canada as students and also it's becoming difficult to actually gain PR status while they are still in Canada because they because of their age. And that doesn't mean that they cannot gain PR status, but they have to be very strategic. And I started talking about some strategies to adopt. I talked about um, changing occupations, that's pivoting. I talked about moving provinces. Now, in continuation of that particular video, I want to actually lay emphasis on the fact that it is increasingly difficult for people who are 40 years and above to be able to create an express entry profile, even if you studied in Canada. It is very, very difficult, which means you have to rely on the available opportunities that are within the province to see whether you can actually um, be able to transition from temporary status to permanent residence after your studies. And for people who are in Ontario, I'm sad to say this, if you are 40 years and above and you're in Ontario, and you're not living in any of the RNIP communities and you didn't school in any of the RNIP communities for you to immigrate under RNIP, it will be difficult for you to actually get a PR in Ontario except you do certain things, which I talked about in my last video. And one of them I said was actually moving out of Ontario. So I will talk about moving out of Ontario and the provinces you should be targeting if you want to move out of Ontario. But before I proceed, I also need to mention this, right? There are some people who come into Canada as students maybe you got your admission by yourself you did everything by yourself you were targeting a particular province maybe you went to ontario and if you are still studying and you are 40 years and above and you are in ontario the best thing you can do is actually to secure admission in another province that has a clear pathway for people that fall into the to your age category so that you don't get stuck this is one strategy after study so you don't finish your education in ontario um, and then get stuck you can finish your education in another province. Provinces that you can finish your education that can accommodate your age range can be provinces like New Brunswick, um, Manitoba. I don't want to mention Alberta for now because they don't have a clear-cut pathway. Um, the Atlantic provinces like Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, um, Newfoundland and Labrador. I'm, I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe when I talk about Newfoundland and Labrador, I will explain why I am a bit skeptical about Newfoundland and Labrador. Okay, so like I said, I just want to reiterate what I said. If you are in Canada 
you are in Ontario or British Columbia and you are actually studying an occupation that is not in demand in that province and you have or you are in the you are, you are in your first semester period what you can do is you can secure admission to another school within Canada especially in the provinces that I mentioned and then move from Ontario to these provinces so that it will be easier for you to complete your education in these provinces and then also apply for provincial nomination in these provinces because they have pathways that can accommodate your age they have pathways that can accommodate your occupation they have pathways that can accommodate your uh, experience compared to ontario for example provinces like manitoba has a list of occupations in demand that that accommodates a lot of occupation so if you finish in in manitoba if you finish your education in manitoba you don't have to be stuck in occupations like healthcare or any other occupations you can do a range of occupations and you'll be eligible for the manitoba um, provincial nomination the only thing about manitoba provincial nomination is that they have been delaying approval of they are PMPs. It's taken as much as one year. That is the only challenge about MPMP. Other provinces that I would recommend, or number one out of all the provinces I recommend, is actually New Brunswick. New Brunswick, um, if you're able to complete your education in New Brunswick, you would apply directly under the Student Connection Pathway, directly. So you can apply under the Student Connection Pathway or the Employer Connection Pathway. Either of these two pathways you can apply the next province i will also recommend is prince edward island although prince edward island has been in the news lately because they changed their immigration policies to accommodate the occupations that are only in demand um and this has impacted a lot of applicants they were there were people that did some protesting i'll put a video on the screen so that you can see the protest and all of that they did some protesting trying to convince the um immigration minister to, to consider people who were already in the province uh prior to the change so that they don't get affected normally when immigration ministers change policies they usually consider people who had already been existence then the policy will not affect people who are coming in so it doesn't affect people who were there but in this case for prince edward island the policy is affecting people who are already in that province that does not mean that prince edward island is not a province to go to it's a good province because they have one of the longest age range for applicants i mean if you're 18 to 59 years old i'm repeating it again if you're 18 years to 59 years old you can apply for provincial nomination in priest edward island and i'm going to put a list of the occupations that they have that is in demand so let's say you schooled in ontario right and it's difficult for you to get pr in ontario the best thing you can do is actually to get a job offer in prince edward island in one of the occupations that is in demand and you move to pei you could be able to apply for the prince edward island provincial nomination skilled worker pathway because you you have a job you have a job offer in an occupation that is in demand so i i like i said from the beginning of my video i'm very particular about people who are 40 years and above because it's increasingly difficult to create an express entry profile and they have to look for strategic ways to get their PR status while they are still in Canada. So these are some of the pathways I said, you have to move provinces. If you're in Ontario, particularly in Ontario, you have to move out of Ontario to either New Brunswick, Manitoba, um, Prince Edward Island. Um, I've not talked about Nova Scotia yet or Newfoundland and Labrador because I'll talk about it in my next video. I don't want to make this video too long. I just want to give this information to people out there that you cannot, you shouldn't be stuck in a place like Ontario, especially if you're 40 years and above. You shouldn't be stuck. You should be strategic. And if you need more details, um, it's better for you to book a consultation so that we can have a conversation and plan on how you can gain your permanent residency status. I hope I have shared a useful information today. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.